It's time for phase three and the final phase of all the things I've done to this car, where it stands today, and I'm so happy with the results. Let's get started. So before we dive into my $3,000 charger, we have been digging into the smart car. You guys just saw a video on the smart car, the mouse damage. It's way worse than we thought. Let's go take a look. So this is what a smart car looks like when you've gutted it like a fish. There's no seats, no nothing in it. Every time Magic Mike fixed a wire or two, he discovered more and more. Finally, he worked his way to the back back here and there is even larger rat's nest back there with more chewed wires. We have contacted the customer and they said, whatever, just go ahead and fix it. Let's do it. But the customer did mention when they bought the car not too long ago that it smelled like mice inside of it. And now we know why. Let's take a look at the mice nest. So there it is. I'm not going to touch it. I don't want to get hantavirus or something crazy like that. Magic Mike's had gloves and a mask on and everything, removing all of this stuff. But we found several clumps like this where mice have been living in here. This is apparent that they've been here for a while. This hasn't happened over the past week or two. They've been literally living in this car like a hotel or a, an apartment or something. So we are continuing fixing all the chewed up wiring. We still have so much more wiring to fix and to double check everything. We have solved a couple of the codes. They've gone away with the ABS or ESP and things like that. They are now coming back online. The codes are going away, but there's still two more to go with the transmission and the actuator. There's no communication with those. Magic Mike has checked continuity between the communication lines at the ECM back here and some of the connectors up here on the dash and they, there is no continuity. That means they're still chewed somewhere. So we're diving in even deeper into this thing. And there's smart car parts all over the place. Pan over there, Mrs. Wizard, and look at the, the table. That's a whole table full of smart car parts. All because of mice. You can thank the mice for it. Did you guys hear that? No muffler Newton again. Luckily, on the charger, it has mufflers now. Let's go back over to the charger. So since the last time we looked at this car, there have been five or 10 more improvements on it to bring it even further up to snuff. One of them I talked about in the last video was replacing the windshield because the other one had cracks running all through it. As you can see, brand new windshield, nice and shiny, no cracks. Looks like a new car there as well. A lot of the things I have done is actually under the car, but I'll get the box of parts that Junior Mint replaced. It was surprising how bad some of these parts are. Let me go grab the box, guys. It's actually a box and a bucket, sorry. The air filter was pretty dingy, we replaced that. That's not that big of a deal. Here's our flex discs, and I'll let you guys take a look at them. You can see all around that mounting point, there's cracks all in the rubber. This one as well is even worse. I believe these are probably original. You can see the, when you start to see these cloth fibers coming out, that's where it's ripping the internal structure inside of here. And these can just rip and fall apart, especially with the amount of torque this thing has. So those are gone and we have brand new ones in place. Here is a motor mount on the passenger side. You can see all the rips and tears in it. The rubber is badly torn. Let me show you guys the driver's side. This is what it was doing when I was do trying to do burnouts. What? You were doing burnouts? Yes. Wizard. I kept getting a weird clunking and it felt like a rubber band, like the power was whoa. And this was why the weight of the engine was absorbing some of the power. So I'm glad that that's been replaced. This is the transmission mount. There's nothing broken on it. 
but the height here, we compared it to the new one, it was almost a half an inch taller. So that means that it's sunken quite a bit, which affects the geometry of the drive line. So those are drive line parts, and with 250,000 miles, it doesn't surprise me that they were all toasted, roached out. They were bad. And it explains some of the weird driving characteristics that it had. Another problem that I had was the fuel gauge would report full, then sometimes half, then sometimes three quarters, even though I knew that I just filled up. So the fuel pump is actually two pieces on this car. There's a left and a right. The left has the actual main fuel pump, but both pieces have a float gauge. Let me show you guys. This looks like some sort of an artificial heart, Mrs. Wizard. Uh, definitely weird looking. So here is the passenger side and you can see it has a float and it squeaks like something's wrong with it. It wasn't getting good contact. These hoses can get brittle and break just like they did when Junior Mint took them apart. They just literally crumbled in his hand which I'm glad we did this because this is all probably original stuff. And then there's the other half which has the actual pump right here. You can see it just snapped on him and broke. And it also has its own fuel level. Listen to that, guys. I believe this one was getting stuck and not floating, and all of a sudden it would jump back up. And Luckily, you do not have to drop the tank on these cars to do this job. You just pull the rear seat out, and there's two access panels, and you get right to it. If I would have had to drop the tank, I may not have messed with this right now, but based on the fact that we just removed the back seat, get to it, I told Junior Mint, I don't want to run out of gas and think, I had a half a tank, why did it run out? I don't, I don't want to play that game. I want to know how much gas is in my car. So with the amount of miles, it doesn't surprise me that those things are acting up. And really the fuel pump, I bet I was on borrowed time. So that's behind me now. And it's a good thing when Junior Mint took the back seat out, he didn't find any weird surprises like Tyler did with his Methorati. Yes. We know that these people, whoever owned this car before, were heavily hitting the weed because I used to work at a jail. I kind of know the situation there. And all the buttons on the steering wheel have little pock marks all in them. And that's from the seeds actually like popping or whatnot while they're smoking and and getting all over the steering wheel. I've seen that on other cars before, and I know that's a telltale sign that they've been heavily smoking weed in the car. This car, I know for a fact, has been hot boxed over and over and over again. Luckily, it will not be again because me and Mrs. Wizard do not smoke weed. So based on that, we were concerned we would remove the seats and have some similar situation like the Methorati on Hoovy's Garage, but luckily we found just a little bit of trash some Sonic drive-in peppermints. And you know, you guys always find Taco Bell sauce packets. They're in every car in America. We found a few in the back of there. And you guys remember on the first video that we did, there was a little bottle of Maker's Mark. They did have a couple of vices, and maybe with the car acting up, it was making them so stressed out that it needed to relieve some stress. I don't know the story there, but I do know the results. I can see the results. Let's get this thing on the lift and show you guys kind of everything we did and what it looks like now. I did mention it has belly pans on it now, and they're kind of aftermarket. They don't fit perfectly, but they were cheap, like 20 bucks a piece, and it didn't take too much. We'll go ahead and look through this direction, and I'll show you the motor mounts. You can see it sits nice and high now, so not only were they ripped and torn, but they were fully collapsed as well. It's really helping with the alignment of the, the driveline geometry. Let's check the other side. There's a nice new motor mount. 
sitting nice and high like it should be. Here we have a new transmission mount where this metal piece was almost touching the cross member here. It was pretty close. Now I can fit my fingers in there. So that wasn't torn luckily, but it was collapsed pretty bad, which really is hard on the flex disc. As you can see up here, it's a nice brand new flex disc. No more cracks. And we go back to the very back, back here. Another flex disc. And if you guys look at this and think that looks like Mercedes type stuff, it is. This is basically late 90s E-Class Mercedes parts that Chrysler used. The whole setup is basically that. Here are the mufflers I had installed. They're made by a company called Allied. And you can see that it says Street Max. It's not really a name brand or anything like Magnaflow or Borla, but they were fairly cheap and they sound really, really good. I don't think they're very common. I don't think that you can go to most exhaust shops. Maybe a few might know about them, but uh, they work really good in this application. They, they have a good sound, but yet they're quiet. That's really what I wanted. So let's go ahead and get this thing back on the ground. So that's pretty much for the drive line. Everything underneath is taken care of now. I did mention in the last video that I wasn't happy with the results of pulling off the old rub strips or belt molding or whatever you guys call it. I did order a set from eBay that was supposedly painted to match this car and they arrived really pale. It really didn't look very good. I didn't put them on yet. So I took it to a different place and had them resprayed and they supposedly did the PYH top banana color. I brought them back and they were really, really bright. Again, it didn't match. And finally I said, I'm, I'm done with that. Uh, maybe this is faded or maybe something's different about the car, but I'm not gonna keep doing that. So I painted them black to match everything else that's black on here. And maybe it doesn't look the best, but it sure beats having pock marks and chip paint all down the side of my car. I really couldn't stand that, but I can stand that. So I'm happy with the results. It looks decent, it looks presentable. And it's not out of place because there's so many other black decals and a, a big wang on the back, a big black wang there. So that's where I'm at with all the repairs and things I've done, but there was one last thing that's the icing on the cake. Let me show you guys. So anybody that has a Challenger or Charger from the mid to late 2000s, 2008, 9, 10, you guys will know what this is. Aha! Diablo Sport Predator 2. I've never been one to do much tunes and tuning my car. I've never gotten into that very much. But in this situation, I know that I wanted to turn off the MDS or the ability for it to turn from a V8 to a V4, the four cylinder mode situation. It was currently working fine. There was nothing wrong, but I know from experience that usually those break in transition between four and eight and back and forth and one of the lifters will stick closed or something will happen and then it's disastrous. It can ruin the cam, it can actually break the block. I've seen it actually break a block before. I decided I will lose two or three miles per gallon to save what's left of this engine. It may have another 50 or 100,000 miles left in it. And if that's the case, I don't want to chance the MDS failing. So I put this on there, the 91 tune, and it runs so much better, it shifts so much better. I'll give a quick run out in front of the shop and let you guys hear it. So with this tune and everything in it, I don't have to hold the brake or do anything crazy. I can just hit the gas and it just does a burnout right now. Just like this. That thing rides and drives amazing. I love that car now. So pretty much finished with that. I do have the seats to redo on it, a few small things, but all in all, I'm very happy. I have about a grand in parts. I bought it for three grand. I'm under the cost of a V6 one that's in good condition. So I really can't complain on that car. We'll do a small update when this thing is fixed and find out all the chewings in it, the mouse chewings. It is really crazy. It's been a while since I've seen one of those, and here we are again. 
If you're curious what kind of tools we use to fix the charger or work on this little smart car, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.